Welcome to the Leadership of Vision podcast by Austin Gardner. For more information and resources, visit worldevangelism.net. Well, I'd like to welcome you back to Leadership with Vision, and I'm here with Jeff Bush, our co-host, and we are wanting to discuss with you today, what is a missionary? So you signed up to be a missionary. What does that mean? And so, Jeff, how about a greeting, and you can get us kicked off. All right. Well, what is a missionary? This is going to be a good topic. I'm sure we're going to have some uh, comments, and actually want to encourage you, uh, why don't you comment on the bottom of these or write us back? We would love to hear from you so that we could better uh, be a blessing or be a help or no different areas in which we can probably get a little bit better or help a little bit more people. Yep. So when we're talking about a missionary, you know, the, the word missionary is not found in the Bible at all. And that's a term we use today. And it's a common and accepted term. Root word was, you know, a sent one, similar to the word apostle. I probably think that the word most like it in the New Testament, it would be evangelist or apostle. In other words, uh, the guys that, that go and get everything started, the guys that go and reach lost people. This is not a guy running a revival in a church by any stretch. You're going to be going to a field where nothing is happening possibly, where no churches are going and or very few churches of, of your stripe are going and you're going to start hard work to get the gospel to that area. So being a missionary, it's a matter of understanding who you are. It'll change the way you do ministry. So we're not talking specifically about your personality, you know, whether you're out going, you're an extrovert, introvert, or we're not talking necessarily about that, but we are saying that, you know, this, a missionary is someone, he's going to be a pioneer. He's going to go out there and start this or get this rolling, carve something out of nothing so that things can't. Obviously, you're going to a field that very likely doesn't have a lot of the gospel or at least an area that doesn't have a lot of the gospel. So you are going there to start that fire. You got all the brush put together, all the wood there, but you've got to start that fire as a missionary. So you could have a, a nice um, bonfire, I guess we could say. Well, I would like to say to you that, you know, I do realize missionaries often go to places and that term can be used for the guy who's uh, just a soul winner or running a bus route in his city. But when we discuss it on Leadership with Vision, we're talking about a person who is going to be cross-cultural, who is going to be in another country, another world, another culture. And most likely there will not be a lot of work being done. Uh, the number of Christians or the percentage of Christians will be low compared to the other part even much more so than in America. And so as you go, I want to challenge you to be a pioneer or to be a starter. So you're going to step into a place where there's little or nothing happening. And out of nothing, you're going to carve out this entire ministry. You're going to start the first churches. You're going to get the first uh, Bible school going, et cetera, et cetera. You're going to be the guy who starts up everything. You're not a maintainer or a finisher. You're a you're the guy who cranks it up. So we've said before and strongly believe this, but you are not going to be as a pastor, you're going to be the one who's going to produce pastors. So you are the pastor of pastors. You're going there to help start. And just like Paul said, okay, Timothy, run over, over to Ephesus and uh, make sure that goes well. And then leave in charge there, Titus, leave in charge there, those that are going to continue forward. I'm going to keep pushing forward and keep going so that we can start more churches or that we can get the gospel further. The, the truth is that every pastor ought to be an act and work like a missionary. Every pastor ought to be training people, sending people out, starting more churches, and doing everything a missionary should do. But in our world, here in the United States of America in 2016, that's not common. Most pastors work as a guy who holds the church together, disciples people, trains a few people, uh, keeps the work stable. Uh, he is not as worried about getting the gospel to the world. He thinks missions is an important part of his church, but it is not his primary ministry. But you're a missionary, and it should be. And I believe as a pastor, it'll be the number one thing that you're trying to do is see what you can do to get the gospel to the world. I believe that's what the commission says. But you as a missionary will be the guy who's going to lead nationals to Christ, uh, disciple them, mentor them, train them till they become pastors, until they can lead those ministries. You're going to be the guy getting all of that done. So you are definitely different than the American pastor who is going to take a, 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 a building, a group of people that have already been there. Often they've had plenty of customs and habits and things that they've done as a church for decades, if not centuries. And you're definitely not the guy going in there carving it out of nothing. So you don't want to roll into town and say, you know, I'm the end all. I'll take care of everything. My wife plays the piano. I'll do the preaching. My kids will help me out with the Sunday school classes, 
we got all of this taken care of. That's not who you are. So everybody can sit at ease and you got everything taken care of. No, you're there to say, we're going to train some piano players or guitar players or some singers and those who are going to be the ushers and give the announcements. You're going to be training pastors, sending them out so that they can get the job done. That's what a missionary is. A missionary is the one, he pioneers it. He starts it. He gets it rolling so that he can turn it over. It can become indigenous. It can grow further. That's what a missionary does. And that's what Paul said in Romans 15, 20. I strived, I worked at, I fought, I did everything in my power to preach the gospel where Christ was not named and I didn't want to build on another man's foundation. Now in the world today, obviously we're building on another man's foundation all the time. We stand on the shoulders of those that have gone before us. We have the word of God. Paul was an apostle. He was different than us. But if you go as a missionary, you may very well be landing in a country and teaching things to people that are animist, Buddhist, Hindus, uh, very religious and not knowing God, and you're going to be the guy teaching them everything they'll ever really know about the real Christ. And the years to come after you, the people will learn other things, but for the meantime, it is you teaching them everything. It, sometimes it even becomes a competition between missionaries. We have to be careful because they'll say, now Paul went where it never was named. You know, we're not saying that there's no missionaries in your country. And I've even heard some people say there are no missionaries in their country. That's not true. There are, you might not know them, or they not, might not even be public or online or whatever. There are. But what we are saying is it, you're going to go to a spot where in the part of a different city or in that city where there's nothing going on, at least for the gospel being advanced, that's where you're going to start. And so you're not starting with a large group of people. We come in as a team and we're going to get this rolling. You're going in by yourself. You've prayed. You've desired this. You're going in there. You're going to start it. And so now you're going to build it. You're not going to build off of somebody else. You're going to build what God has given you. So if you're on the field and you're in a country where there are other missionaries, pick out a piece of the city, pick out a good chunk of people, at least 50, 100,000, a million people where nobody's really preaching and very few churches exist that preach the gospel uh, truly, faithfully, and fairly and get in there and bust yourself trying to get the gospel out. Train pastors, prepare me. And you can work with others, but try to not lump all the salt together. Spread the salt out so that we spread the flavor out so that we make a difference and get the gospel around the world. I remind you what Paul said in 2 Corinthians 10. He said to preach the gospel of the regions beyond you. So Paul was continuing to push forward. He didn't stay there with the big group and stay there so that everything, you know, lumps together. Like Pastor just said, we want to continue pushing forward. So the gospel gets in other areas. There's many cities, villages, districts, whatever you want to call them, that do not have uh, a missionary, that do not have the gospel being preached there. So we want to get the gospel out. There was an older man in the city where I went to. He would have been probably my age. And I was in my thirties. He's 25. 30 years older than me. And the young missionaries often criticized him and they said, you know, he was really good at getting everything started, but he never finished everything. He actually wrote a paper and said, you know, I realize I have the ministry of Paul. I start things and Apollos is the guy that comes in and finishes things and I don't even claim to be you. But the truth is, if you and I don't have this idea that we will start churches and we will train people and we will get things going, then somebody else can come along and help finish it up. If we, uh, you know, the pastor is going to stay here and finish it up. Let's train men. Let's prepare materials. Let's train men to train others. Let's turn our work over to national. Let's keep moving and getting as much started and going as we possibly can. So a missionary has specific characteristics. You know, even if he's an introvert and extrovert, even, you know, however he is, he's got specific characteristics. But let's talk, if we can, Pastor, about developing a strategy um, or a plan to reach our country. How can we get a strategy? We start right now. We're just getting to the field. How can we have a strategy? strategic plan to reach our city and our country. Well, you know, I would sit down with a map and I would get all the statistics and all the information and like a general in an army, I would make a plan to reach the entire country and how I could get around and impact that country. So if I were you, I would study my country kind of like you did when you were on deputation. And then I would write down, all right, how many churches do we need? Where can I send people? I would keep that in front of my people. I would actually visit these places. I would take my young students I'm training to these places and I would show them these different parts of the world and I would keep it in front of everybody, we are trying to reach the country in our lifetime. We are going to start as many churches as we can. We're going to we're going to spread out across this country. That means you're going to have to think much beyond having a church. So you're probably going to need a Bible college. You're probably going to need a printing house where you can print materials that will get everywhere. You're probably going to need websites and podcasts and all these things because you know you're not just dealing with people you're talking to, but you have got something going all over the world. So when's the last time you got out your city map? 
When's the last time you got out your country map? When's the last time you studied to see what could be done all around? You're brand new to the field, and if you're not careful, you'll settle in and sit down and get comfortable, and you will forget why you're there. Now, we've got to, obviously, if we're going to do so much, we've got these big ambitions. We believe this. We're going to reach the city. We're going to reach the country. You have to have a team of people around you. Now, you might say, what in the world you just said? Don't have a team. I mean, we're going to go carve this out. Correct. But our team has now consisted of men and women that we are seeing saved, that God is allowing us to train. So this is a team of workers, of soldiers that God has given you. You prayed for these. You're asking God for these. Now you went out and found them. So you get all these people together, and now they're the ones. Obviously, you can do a lot more with them than you can do alone. And so you're going, but the team is not all these Americans or all these missionaries. These are people that you have found, that you have prayed with, that you've discipled, that you're teaching. And now together, as a team, you can go out there and reach other parts of the city, other areas, and even send out more pastors and train them so they can reach their family members and do much more. So you need to be so busy and have so much going on that you've got to have help. So you need other guys training to be in the ministry. You need ladies that can be secretaries. You need to be everything possible. So you know this. All right, I'm going to start churches, not a church, a bunch of churches. I'm going to train all of them to tithe and support their pastor. I'm going to train all of them to get to missions. I'm going to train all of them to train men. We're going to get all these people together. We're going to train them. Then we're going to send them out. We're going to get a global view of our country and our city and even the countries around us. And we're going to begin to say, I need as many men as possible. And so like, it's like being in war and you're like, I've got to have more soldiers. I got to have more soldiers. I got to have more soldiers. And so you're going to be constantly raising funds, constantly training people, constantly sending people out. I mean, it will, it's a never ending struggle to get the gospel to your city to your country, to the countries around you, and to the world. God may raise up Americans that will come help you, but if they do, be sure and spread them out. Be sure and get everybody in different sections so that we are doing all we can to get the gospel to the world. And so everybody knows that, man, we have this great load on us to get the gospel out. Um, Allow me to pause if I could, Pastor. You said that we want to even, uh, God might send some other Americans. That's great. We're not discouraging that. We're saying you're not going there to just work with a bunch of Americans. But maybe God will use you to recruit some other Americans. You know, there's students, there's people in churches, maybe in your prayer letter, maybe in these updates that you're given, your email, your blog, or however you are doing, share with, share with them about the need. Tell them, hey man, this many people are being saved, doors are wide open, would you please send some more people? And man, pray and start, you know, start asking that God will send more workers. Hey, that's a great thing. You can't have a, you know, too many workers, so pray that God will send some more, recruit some more. I would go to bed at night and I would wake up in the morning thinking, not about my church, but about the churches, not about my churches, but about the country. And I would constantly be thinking, what can we do to get more people out? There's another city over here. There's another state over here. There's another area over here. There's another section of the city. And it is constantly on my mind. And as you constantly focus on this, God will raise up Americans and God will raise up nationals. And your ministry will grow because you are pushing for God's goal of getting the gospel around the world. You're a missionary. And as a missionary, you're not doing things like the regular guy who said, I'm going to visit everybody in the hospital. I'm going to take care of all my sick people. I'm going to prepare really good messages, and I'm going to take care of the corner of Allen Maple. You are there to get the gospel to the entire world. So we're making a plan. We're making a strategy of how we can reach this city, how we can reach our country, how we can even go out further to reach the world. So while we're starting right there, let's talk about researching your country. Where do the people live? How do you find out? Pastor, How? Well, give me some steps. How do I research my country? get to know it and study it. Well, you know, I'm going to get me a map and I'm going to get a paper map. I know we got Google Maps now and I know all that, but you know, it's good to have things hanging on the wall that constantly remind you and start putting out where the churches are and where the people are so that it's in front of you all the time. But you can get on Google, you can get uh, you can get with the, the CIA website, uh, CIA.gov has tons of information about places. Uh, there are tons of websites where you can research that. Plus, I suggest that you make trips. I think ever so often, and you need to drive to another city and you need to spend the day praying over that city. Go to the top of the highest hill, look at the lights of the city, pray for the city. Don't let yourself get locked into the corner of Elman Maple, but decide I've got to research all I can. Where do the people live? Where are the major cities? How many churches that preach the gospel are in this area? What can be done to reach this area? Okay, so you're going to find out, are those people receptive or not? Uh, What's going on there? What's a good spot in that city? And so you're not going to, in other words, you're not going to close yourself in a 
room and close the door and say, this is where I'm working. You're continually pushing yourself forward. You're continuing going out. Uh, Pastor used to take people up on the mountain and see the whole city, not not just your area where you're working, the whole city. And maybe you could say, I know many of our friends might know this, but others, what did you, why would you take them up to the city? I wanted to take them up there and I would have them pray over the city and I would tell them how many people each light represented. And I would talk to them about the major cities around the world because I wanted them to lift up their eyes and look on the harvest that is white and ready to be harvested, ready for souls to be saved. And so I would like to challenge you. Think about the world. Think about the world. Now, before I move on, can I say that one of the things that I've been criticized for, but I will still tell you, go to a big city. That's a strategic place. Somebody said Austin Gardner doesn't care about small cities and Austin Gardner doesn't care about these little places. That's totally not true. I want you to go to a big city where a lot of people are and train them and send them out as missionaries. You need to be where you can maybe start two or three churches at the same time, have a Bible college that people from all over the city could be involved in. And while we were in Atiquipa, we were sending people out on buses. Our fact is our Bible college met till Friday afternoon at one o'clock and didn't start back till Tuesday morning at eight o'clock. And so that people on Friday afternoon left and traveled to other villages and cities around us and stayed there Friday night. They'd have a youth meeting. Saturday, they do visitation. Saturday night, they would do discipleship. Sunday morning, Sunday school and church. Sunday night, church. And they would get back on a bus Sunday night or Monday, and they would be back in class on Tuesday because we were trying to reach our area with the gospel. We wanted to get the gospel out. I've had people travel as much as 18 hours on a bus every weekend to carry the gospel out. I had people riding in the luggage compartment going from Adikipa to Lima to carry the gospel to Lima because we pushed it that hard. You need to say, where are the people receptive? How can I reach them? Let's get people out. We were in the process. I didn't get it done, but I was in the process of even starting a circuit riding ministry to get people out to those small areas around Peru and around Arequipa out into those villages because I want everyone to hear the gospel. You know, if we're going to keep going forward, I would suggest and I would strongly recommend that grab a hold of some missionary biographies, grab a hold of some good books and let those books help you dream. Let those books help you see bigger than you actually know how to see. It's not going to just come to you, man, I can do this or you've got to I mean, you've got to feed yourself on good things. So get a hold of some books that'll help you think, man, this is a good idea. You know, Pastor was just saying, going around and taking this to little villages or where do these ideas come from? So grab a hold of some good stuff, some good information, listen to others, ask for advice and begin to dream a little bit more and believe that you can do a little bit more than what you're doing right now. I would research my entire country. I would put together every spot I'd like to see a church started. I would train every young man I was training and I'd tell him to train others because this is where we got to go. It is amazing. People rise to the challenge. People rise to the need. You get what you expect. You get what you look for. So you must put the burden out there so people want to rise up and help you get the job done. Uh, So I want to challenge you to get the biggest vision you possibly can. I want to challenge you to be a missionary, to be cranking it up, to be starting it. I want to challenge you to develop a strategy that you would sit down and say, all right, this is what we're going to do now. And God will, and this is next. And so we're working our way through a plan. Now, don't forget, you're using the internet, you're using radio, you're using television, you're writing uh, the, uh, you're writing materials, uh, you are training men, you're doing everything. I mean, you have got to realize you're the captain of a ship, you're the general of a large army, you, have, you are Alexander the Great, and you are here to conquer more areas with the gospel message of Jesus Christ. If you're going to lead this forward, you obviously have to be knowledgeable of what to do. And so I would, I would say, please continue growing. Please continue reading. Please continue listening to this podcast and others. Please grow so that as you grow, you know, it's a very sad thing that, uh, you know, followers catch up very quickly to the man who's leading them and then they can't go any further and then they get frustrated and go somewhere else. Make sure you yourself are growing. You're reading, you're getting more and God is teaching you more so that you can lead those people better. You can have a bigger dream and you can have bigger goals and you can help those people people that God has given you so that you can continue on reaching your city with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Well, maybe we've given you something to think about this week, and I hope you meditate on it. Hope you go ahead and buy you some maps. Hope you start doing research. Hope you bust it to reach your area. But I hope you get so much ministry going, you've got to get several people on your team. And it's not about one church, but about many churches, and about a Bible school, and about all the other things it'll take to get the gospel to the world. It's the most exciting thing you could ever possibly be involved in. So I challenge you to go to work on it. Let's get the gospel to the world. Well, jump online if you would, worldevangelism.net. You're going to find this podcast a lot 
lot others that you can continue following, but you're also going to find some very good articles, some um, some things that will inspire you or encourage you and help you dream a little bit more. We hope we can be a blessing to you. Would you write us? If not, jump on worldevangelism.net, write us, give us a comment, tell us what helped you or how we can, maybe there's some areas that we haven't touched that you would like us to touch. We would love to hear some feedback from you. Well, God bless each of you for listening. And I challenge you to go back and listen to all the podcasts we've done over all the time that this, this podcast has been out. And I pray it would be a blessing to you. I pray that God would use you to reach your area with the gospel and the entire world. Let's do all we can till Jesus takes us home. You've been listening to Leadership with Vision by Austin Gardner. Visit worldevangelism.net to discover more podcasts and useful articles.